what is a sedentary lifestyle and how does it impact on a person? So first of all, let's just make sure we understand the concept. Sedentary means too much sitting, sitting and or, let's put and or, lying down, okay, lying down, okay, so basically sedentary means not moving about very much, so someone who, and, and it's not just about laziness, but by the way, in fact, I don't think it is about laziness the more I think about it, I think what it's about is about lifestyle, and it's about expectation, and it's about breaking cycles, okay, so we're interested in why, and what the impacts would be of someone being sedentary, before we do that, I think it's really vital that we define the opposite, all right, so what is it to be active? Well, if we think about uh, small people, children, okay, I think you guys would be much close to the adult bracket at this point, but for children, active means seven times a week doing 60 minutes of activity with at least one of those sessions being higher activity or higher intensity. And for adults, we are talking, I'll put an L in that, it'd help, we're talking about five <laughs> not 50, we are talking about five lots of 30 minutes of activity per week, okay? So it's when we don't do this, this is what we're saying, when people don't do this, they become sedentary, that's what we're referring to, okay? Too much sitting and or lying down, all right? Now, let's take the word sedentary lifestyle, or let's take the concept, and let's put sedentary, Okay, and what I want to say here are what are the consequences, sedentary consequences. If someone is sedentary, that's an N, believe it or not, what's going to happen to them or probably going to happen to them? So let's go through this. First of all, they are likely to gain weight. Okay, so they are likely to become overweight. So that's the first point. In other words, their energy balance is off. They're likely to, to be taking in more energy than they are spending. Okay, so that's a fairly obvious point. We also want to consider that they would become over fat, okay? And it's a term that I'll put in inverted commas. The proportion of their body which would be fat would increase as a result of this. <clears throat> as a result of both of these points, this person could over time, wouldn't happen overnight by the way, but this person could experience obesity. And be reminded, obesity is a BMI reading of over 30. Over 25 is overweight, we've got that here, but obesity is over 30. You might also be aware um, <clears throat> that over 35 BMI can, can actually be considered morbid obesity, okay, or morbidly obese. Now, that can actually have serious implications for health and should be dramatically avoided. Um, but, but people get large. I mean, it, it happens, right? You're probably aware of it. You've, prob you know, you've probably seen or experienced this to some degree. Um, we're also say seeing here and I'm going to lead on to lots of details of this, is that we get an up arrow, which we consider an increase, an increased risk to long-term health. Now, you've probably studied in your biology that something like obesity is a risk factor to other diseases, right? Things like type 2 diabetes, for example, and it's exactly that point we're going to look at these long-term health issues. Not all necessarily related to obesity, but many of them are. Okay, so mentally, emotionally, a person might experience depression. I don't know how to define depression. By all means, go and Google it. My, I think my point is about extreme sadness and very low mood over an extended period of time. A sedentary lifestyle can cause that or be a contributing factor to that. Now, that's not to say that going out, running, and exercising can solve that, but perhaps it's one of the factors that can help to prevent it. And if depression sets in with an individual, it can be one of the mechanisms that a person might be able to use as a package of things to try and remedy that problem. Um, a person will have a greater risk for CHD. Remind yourself, this is coronary of the heart, heart disease, okay? So just to be clear what we mean here, these are the blood vessels leading to the heart itself, the ox to, ox to deliver oxygenated blood. They become blocked, clotted, they become plaque deposited, and that can lead to coronary heart disease, things like angina and pain in the chest. It's pretty nasty old stuff, really. Let's keep going. A person could also experience high blood pressure. Actually, for some of the same reasons I just mentioned, high cholesterol level plaque deposits in the blood. There are names for these things. There's one that's called atherosclerosis, another one called arteriosclerosis. I'll talk, maybe we'll talk about that on a different qualification, but they're interesting points. Now, I do want to mention to you that high blood pressure can be referred to as hypertension. If you're in a position to use that word, that would be wonderful. Now, let's go a bit further. I mentioned diabetes before. 
lifestyle, and we're not talking about diabetes that someone is pre, you know, genetically predetermined to potentially, that would be type 1 diabetes. We are talking about diabetes as type 2 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, okay? Type 2 diabetes. This is often one of the risk factors we mentioned before is obesity, okay? So we need to be careful with that one. I want to mention to you, I think this blue might be, oh, that's a nice blue. I'm happy with that. I thought it was going to be too dark. Oh, it is a bit dark. <laughs> Concentrate, James. Come on. Osteoporosis. Now, osteoporosis is when the bone tissue fails to sort of lay down additional kind of bone cells, okay? I'm not going to get into the details, but the bone is like a matrix, it's a network, and it's, it actually declines and renews. Your bones, um, I don't want to get into it here, but bone cells, they actually die off, and of course, they're replaced. Now, if that replacement is slow, then the person can experience what we might refer to as brittle bones, brittle bones or osteoporosis okay and of course that can be really problematic for a person nearly there next consequence the person will experience decrease down arrow muscle tone okay this can have impact for things like back posture and pain in the back and a weak core and finally guys I want to just mention that on the performance side of this I don't really haven't really left myself much room here but central lifestyle can have an impact on components of fitness. I'm just going to put on COF, things like agility, flexibility, things like muscular endurance. They're going to decline because of being sedentary. Now, of course, you can refer to that as untraining or de-adaptation. It's reversing. It's reversibility. We've looked at these principles elsewhere. But these are the consequences of sedentary lifestyle, and therefore being active is a good thing to do with one's life.